Do you know David Cross? He's one of my comedy heroes. So okay, I so love his art. He's been a guest. I don't know him personally. He's been a guest on this show. Oh. I had it. He was a donor to my campaign in 20. Oh, he had wow. A great clip that we just listened to yeah. the other day. He's like Schindler's List. Didn't find it very funny. Not funny. It, <laughs> we were, like it was really yeah, funny. He's like, so just, dark, and like the fact that he grew up um, in the South, also I think in Atlanta or near Atlanta, and in, you know, just you know, Jewish in Atlanta, Muslim in Alabama. I really related to his stuff. Um, yeah, and his dark humor and how there's always some, yeah, something. I think he makes fun of everyone, every really oh. every culture, or whatever. So to me, it's hilarious because it's dark. Yeah. It's like there's always some sort of like, uh, you know, just something you don't see coming. Like for I love his I love his stuff. It's brilliant. Yeah, I bet you if we could get you, I bet you we could lure him. Like to probably all over a few guys. Yeah, and uh, we've also had Judah Friedlander on here too. Oh, yeah, I've I've done uh, shows with Judah. He's wonderful. He's wonderful. And I will tell you, I've always. I, yes. I've always been, mm-hmm. Yeah. Kate's great. And yeah. Kate's we've great had we like we we really because um, you know comedians and activists are kind of from yeah. the same type of people. Yeah. If a theater can, uh, yeah. If we get a theater, I, I'm sure Kate would work out something. Yeah. Else. That could be way fun. Um, the the I, I love toilet humor, and I have to say <laughs> that's not that my scene. Thing, but... That scene in Scary Movie 2 with David <laughs> and Chris Elliott when he's telling him, take my hand. And I'm just. She I has can't... not seen that. I can tell by her face. I did. Face. No, no I did. I, I did. Really? I, I, yeah. I, I, just, I don't know. I think I, was, I lost a little respect for you a little bit just I don't, now that you know was, what he's talking about. No, no. I don't remember this scene. I'm laughing at that idea. But I I definitely watched all of that. I don't remember that okay. scene. So Chris, Chris Elliott is a very underrated comedian. and he. I'll give you that. And, and he. They made him wear this prosthetic tiny hand, and it's, it's, it's like trying to. And David Cross, who's supposed to be in a wheelchair in the movie, and he's like hanging on. He's like, help, help! And, they, and, and Elliot comes over and he says, "Take my hand!" And he's like, "No, give me your other hand!" Oh <laughs> God. Know? Take it. It's that I, I love that. Stuff. It's absurdity I, too. Yeah, that I love about I love it. I absurd yeah. comedy. I do. Yeah, I, I, it's not. Yes, you do. do. Hey, well, you don't. I I like I dark. Just, I, I yeah. No, I'm just yeah. Well, I think David Cross is definitely dark and absurd. Uh, oh, a lot he's of ways. absurd. And, and Mr. Show and with Bob and David and like, um, I've watched all of his. TV, you know, um, Arrested Development. Mark, Arrested Development is one of my favorite. Okay, oh, please, God. please tell me that you remember the episode. Where he has the business card, the business card, yes, and all of this, and all of this, <laughs> and that to me, like my husband and I were roaring on that forever. That and the Blue Man Group when he went to the go bl- to the, I just blew myself. Oh yeah, I still send gifts to my cousins <laughs> of like the, we we have constant running jokes and inside jokes about uh about David uh, stuff from Arrested Development. So uh, yeah. yeah, okay, now I feel my favorite. Stuff. If you could, like, so we have his, his phone number in our donor base because he donated, but no one ever answers their phone. It always goes to voicemail and his voicemail, he, he, he I, I'm like pretty immune to people fooling me that it's really them, but his, he's like, hi, hi. Like it, it's the most ridiculous thing, <laughs> but yeah, I, yeah, it's funny. So being a comedian in New York, especially right now, considering it is the epicenter of the Jewish population. It has to be, uh, I'd be curious to hear what the experiences has has been like, especially over the last six months, uh, because now things are getting very, very serious. Uh, there is a mass famine that is going to kill countless people. Uh, this administration is doubling down on those efforts and telling you that uh, you got to support us, even in spite of all this, because Trump and all that. Uh, I'm curious to what the experience has been like for you personally, uh, being around that in the city for the past several months. Yeah, it's been, um, man, oh God, it's it's hard to say. I feel like um, people have just been coming out, kind of going to either extreme, right? Because we're seeing a lot of pro-Palestinian, anti-Zionist Jewish people be more active, be more vocal. And then we're seeing the, the right Zionist, you know, pro-Israel people be more vocal. So you now everything is so mainstream and in people's faces. And it's just, 
because there's people like I know kind of like were Zionists but didn't really and then after these everyone's just like posting you know I've been harassed by this one booker who's harassed many people um, who bo- you stop booking people because either they're Palestinian or posted about Palestine. I know people whose like managers drop them. I know people who've lost a lot of brand deals. It's weird. Even walking into a room now and on stage when I say that I'm Palestinian, I get this like kind of moment where I'm like waiting to, for a reaction and then I exhale. And if they're like, oh, most people are like clapping and, and happy, but there's a lot of tourists in New York too. Um, But you got to I'm just mindful of which like bookers or clubs um, are going to be biased towards me because of that Um, and what spaces I feel safe in and uh, which ones are, you know, allow for that kind of like racist Zionist kind of like rhetoric because, you know, you're not going to let in like a white supremacist Nazi come in, but you're going to let somebody who's extremely Zionist and posting yep. crazy shit on their Instagram do comedy. Nazi at this point with the way they're at. It's the same. Yeah. It's the same. Yeah. I mean, look, we, we, you know, we actually went down uh, to Miami to see uh, Michael Rappaport and this was several. Yeah. Uh, speaking of Nazis, years. speaking of the real terrorists. This is like, it yeah. was, it was February of 23. 23. Yeah. Yeah. So it was oh. over a year ago. I mean, he had a couple of moments, but he's not that imp- he's not that impressive no. in terms of a comedian. No, and, and now he's insane. And as far as I'm concerned, you know, I, yeah. I just see it as sort of the dollar signs type situation. It's like Deborah Messing. Yeah. It's like if you want to oh, know the Lord, one place, yeah. In, yeah, if you want to know the one place in New York City you don't want to go, if you want to avoid the Zionists, don't go to the Upper East Side. That's like the one place you just have to know. Yeah, uh, I used to live there. Thank God I live in Brooklyn now, but yeah. I it's so different like i'm going to my local coffee shop everyone's wearing kefia there's free palestine yeah. every I was like, this is so crazy because i lived on that free side for a few years and I, i'm just like thank god i, I i've been in brooklyn during all of this because there's just like free palestine graffiti everywhere it's just so different but yes obviously um even though there's like a huge mosque uh, on the uh, on the upper east side that i used to live by so it's like a it's a weird intersection of like yeah. lots of Muslim Palestinians, but also a lot of Zionists. And obviously not to say all the Jewish people that live here are Zionists, but you know, it, this is the epicenter of Zionism and, uh, or the U S in general. I, I also find that a lot of this, at least from my experience in a New York city, you can never tell because everybody really does live amongst each other with a few exceptions, of course, you know, places like park Avenue and, and things like that. But for the most part, uh, you can't really tell. You know, so it's kind of like you could be around people of a lot of different, uh, you know, obviously ethno backgrounds, but also a lot of different economic backgrounds. But the one thing mm-hmm. that I think we've noticed from afar, um, even though down here in South Florida is the second biggest Jewish population in the United States, is that this is very socioeconomic. Uh, the people that yeah. tend to be on the very higher end of the spectrum, a.k.a., you know, places like the Upper East Side, places like Lexington Avenue and Park Avenue, is that this is a wealth issue. The 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 very wealthy Jews. That's why you know when Deborah Messing gave her speech, it was in a. I knew I know where she gave that speech. She gave that speech in a very very wealthy area. And so when you do that, uh, you're kind of just showing your hand in a lot of ways, which is. The people who have the bread, who have been used to being very comfortable with this whole Jewish state because it's very advantageous from a business perspective, are the ones that are very loud and proud. But once you get away from that, it does seem like, and and especially in a lot of Jewish communities, they're not having this. This is not their thing. And they understand the vitality of what's going on here because now it's boomeranging itself in many ways, especially in regards to the rising anti-Semitism, which again, you can understand being attributed to what's going on over there. Right, because uh, that's, you know, kind of at the by design, right, Israel is conflating the two, right, Judaism and Zionism, so that obviously if you criticize Israel, then, oh, you're automatically criticizing Jewish people. But it's that very sentiment that is creating the anti-Semitism in the first place, because we as Palestinians don't want to conflate the two because that undermines everybody's human rights. <laughs>